Hey guys, I'm Lily O'Reilly and this is Lily O'Reilly Reviews and I recently got a present that was like super cool so I wanted to share it with y'all even though I know it's not like what we normally do on here. It's a vermicomposter off of Amazon. So let's get to it, yeah? Okay, so I recently received a vermicomposter as a gift off my wish list off of Amazon. Now, composting is when you pile up a bunch of organic materials, usually inside of a barrel or in a pile outside, and you use heat to break them down to form a nutrient-rich product that's used in planting, essentially. Now, the thing about a vermicomposter is that instead of relying on heat or natural conditions outside, one, it stays in the house, and two, it actually uses worms to break down your organic kitchen matter, which I think is super cool because I try to be really eco-friendly. So a standard vermicomposter comes in a handful of parts. I've already set this one up because I got really excited and I wanted to see how it looked together, but that also helps me show you how it works. So. This vermicomposter has a base level with a spigot that I've already installed for something called worm tea. So there's a lid. This is all made out of recycled plastic. The lid has a plastic tray to keep the worms from escaping. It has a level of coconut fiber above it to help trap any smells that might happen, even though a vermicomposter should not be smelly if you're actually using your worms properly. Beneath the lid, you have what's called a working tray. These trays have a loose open hatch in the bottom that the worms can pass through to travel between the trays. And you can stack up to five working trays in a composter. This will have a sheet of paper at the bottom and then we'll fill it. I'll show you all that later, it's fine. Below that is a worm guard to protect the worms and keep them from escaping because if they make it down to here, this is where your worm tea collects. If your vermicomposter gets too wet, moisture settles here, funnels down here, you flip this little switch and they even give you a lovely worm tea cup. You can take the worm tea and pour it into like your plants or whatever. It's just very nutrient rich. And as you see, each panel has little pegs that when set in place provide air. A lot of people don't realize worms actually need oxygen. They don't do super well in non-oxygenated or stagnant environments. So you install your vermicomposter by setting all of these parts together. Everything fits. Now I'm going to pick this up and move it over to the shelf where the composter is going to live. Ready? And so I've already cleared a place near my gecko terrarium for the vermicomposter to live. Super chill. It's got enough support that I'm not worried about it for the first tray or two. When we get up to two or three trays, I'm going to move it to somewhere else in the house so that I don't have to worry about its support system. One of the things we do here is you have to set a layer of paper in the bottom so that your worms don't try to go down and through. You can use newspaper, but I've got a lot of boxes lately, so I actually pre-folded some brown paper that I'm going to use. Ta-da! Folded. So, when you get this set in there, it should fit pretty well. It helps cut down on liquid getting through, and it definitely keeps your worms from escaping. Now, when you're setting up your tray, your bedding should involve a couple things. One is coconut core. It's actually a super dense brick of fibers from the outside of coconut. This is Sri Lankan. And normally, you would rehydrate this by putting it into a bucket, rehydrating it in the bucket, and then putting it back into the tray. My bucket has gone AWOL. I can't find a bucket. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the sink. I'm going to very gently rehydrate it there. And then I'll come back to you and I'll show you what it looks like when it's rehydrated, okay?
Okay, so some of you that follow me on Snapchat might be familiar with Danger Noodle. This is my Sonoran King Snakes Vivarium. So one of the things you need to do is you kind of have to inoculate your vermicomposter with soil. So I'm going to pop open Danger Noodle's cage. I'm going to get out a couple handfuls of soil, snag a couple earthworms if I see any, and we'll move everything over to where I'm working. So. I'm also using a biodegradable paper lid just so everything stays neat and tidy. Doo, doo, doo. Uh, he is in need of a refresh because as you can see, the soil in his tank is incredibly dark. The worms have worked through it really well. So this is actually primarily worm casings at this point. It's an incredibly clean soil. but. It is the kind of soil I need to mix in with my vermicomposter. Ah, and as you can see, I have very healthy invertebrate life. If you look here, you can see the little buggers crawling around. Those are mostly like baby isopods. There's nothing in here that I'm really worried about, so I'll just chuck it in. They can come along for the ride. And I think that looks like a couple handfuls. It's a good amount. It's enough to put the right kind of bacteria into the system. So sorry about that. I promise I will bring new leaves in tomorrow. Because one of the main things that I refresh his habitat with is because he has what's called cleaner organisms, isopods and earthworms, springtails, all kinds of things so that I never have to clean his viv. All I do is I occasionally put in more leaves that I source from my backyard that I know don't have any pesticides on them. And that's how I feed the crew that keeps his tank clean. So back to the vermicomposter. All right, so we're back at the vermicomposter. I have my couple handfuls of soil with the beneficial bacteria that I picked up out of Danger Noodles Vivarium. We're going to take all of this and just mix it into the coconut core. There we go. So I'm just going to very gently hand mix this to get everything nicely distributed. This is going to be the base for the worms to live in. It's basically like homologous to soil. So once this is all settled in and I've given it a couple days to, well, honestly like a day because I'm impatient and I'm probably going to go worm hunting. Oh no, you shouldn't be in here. Sorry, that's an isopod from my other tank. He's a little bit big to be hanging out in the worm farm. But now that I've got the dirt and everything else mixed in, I'll give it about a day to rest. Then I will put in the worms and I can start feeding them. Okay, so now let's talk about worm food. Oh, and worms, I suppose. You can go to a bait shop and pick up red wigglers. Wrigglers. Red ones. You want the red ones. Because a pound of the red worms can eat three pounds of food in about a week. Not bad. But, and this is very serious, listen to me, serious face. Do not fucking put earthworms in your yard. Don't. Earthworms are actually invasive in large swaths of the US, including 
where I live. So dumping your bait worms out into the yard causes a massive issue because it changes the way that the ecosystem functions and they actually contribute to lower level forest lack of biodiversity. So, all right, tangenting and I'm sorry, but it's important. Forests, especially areas with um, hardwoods, stuff like that, they have what's called duff. So leaves fall and settle. And in areas that don't have native earthworms, these leaves form what's called a duff. It's a layer where a lot of invertebrates, small spiders, small um, salamanders, things like that live. But when you introduce earthworms that shouldn't fucking be there, they chew up all these leaves because that's what they do. That's why we're putting them in the vermicomposter. But they chew up all these leaves and they rapidly introduce nutrients into a system that's not meant to take them. They reduce habitat for all of these little duff creatures. And they actually contribute to the deaths of a lot of plants that live in that understory of the forest, like trillium. Honestly, that's the one that I grew up with that I actually care about. But a lot of these smaller plants that live on that bottom layer of the forest completely get knocked out when you put earthworms in. And I'm talking like a six to 12 month period. It's fast. So if you're buying worms, put them in your composter, keep them in your composter. If you ever decide you don't want your composter, use them to fish or like kill them. And I know that sounds terrible, but do not release them into yards. Fucking awful. But you have them, they're wonderful. You're going to keep them in your composter. What do we feed them? Damn near fucking everything. Um, you can feed them cardboard, paper, eggshells, vegetables, fruits, but not citrus, sawdust, grass. Oh yeah, you can get your grass out of your yard, leaves out of your yard. Horse and cow manure if you really want to. I've been kind of just like collecting a little bin of stuff. So I've got corn husks, I've got eggshells. And what I'm going to do with all of this is eventually you throw it all in. You can put it in whole, but it takes it longer to break down. Ideally, you'll throw it into a blender, chop it up so it's fine, and then just throw a bit in every couple of days. So you'll throw in like a handful, bury it under the bedding a little bit. And when half of it's gone, you put in another handful. It's really intuitive, I promise. If you're making more than they can eat, freeze it. Freezing it also helps to break it down and it means that when you do give it to them, they'll eat it more efficiently. Awesome. Things to not give them. Do not give them meat, fat, citrus, bone, oh lord, salad dressing, plant seeds, spices, um, anything that's spicy, acidic, greasy, or fatty. They can't eat and it will rot. And then your vermicomposter will smell bad and you'll feel like an asshole. And it might even kill the worms because it fucks up the pH. So, yeah. It's like worm keeping 101, I think. Yeah, so I have my worm composter. It's been full of the core. I'm gonna let it set a day. I'll put worms in it. In the meantime, I'm gonna put a lid on it. And if you guys want, I'll check back in once I get some worms and we'll see how they're doing. But for now, I'm pretty happy with how it's going. I think it's going to be pretty good. And I'm really looking forward to putting some worms in there and seeing what happens. So, yeah. Um, oh God, I have to spiel. If you want to find me on the internet or anywhere else that I exist, allmylinks.com slash Lily O'Reilly. You like shit like this? Leave me a comment. Throw me a thumbs up. You can subscribe, but like none of my shit is ever like this. So it's okay if this is a one-off for you. Otherwise, thanks for being here. Thanks for listening to my weird worm shit. And I'll talk to you later. So bye.